More than a month has passed since Russia started the war in Ukraine. Russian troops killed more than 2,000 civilians. Millions of those who survived lost their homes. Cities like Mariupol, where more than 400,000 Ukrainians lived, are 90% destroyed. Russians doesn't hesitate to use the forbidden methods of war. In their war crimes, they are no better than the Nazi forces. So in this video I will explain you why, in my opinion, modern Russia is a fascist state. It is believed that fascism originates in the Italian nationalism, of the time as a political current was founded by Benito Mussolini. Initially, Russian fascism originated in movements known in history as the Black Hundreds and the White Movement. They were monarchists and ultranationalists, who acted during the revolutions in the Russian Empire. Traditionally, they opposed Ukrainians and their culture. But since 1922, power in most parts of the Russian Empire, including Ukraine, was seized by the Bolsheviks. Despite the fact that at first they wanted to establish relations with non-Russian nationalities, soon they changed their policy. Lenin's totalitarian rule was replaced by the Stalinist regime, which staged the real genocide of Ukrainians. Meanwhile, the ideas of fascism spread among the defeated white movement. However, almost all of them were in exile because the Soviet one-party system couldn't allow the existence of their political views in Russia. Fascism was officially banned, just like any other non-communist ideology. Therefore, it was not able to spread widely until 1991. After the breakup of the Soviet Union, in Russia was created a lot of parties that are considered to be fascist. Modern Russian fascism is progressing rapidly, and the number of neo-Nazi and fascist organizations in Russia is growing every year. Their main ideas are based on anti-Semitism, racism, chauvinism, imperialism and the fight against migrants. In the first half of 2017, according to official statistics, 51 people were killed on the grounds of racial hatred. The worst thing is that the government shares the fascist sentiments of society. One of the signs of fascism is the existence of totalitarian power and one-party rule. The party known as United Russia, controlled by a protege of Vladimir Putin, has an absolute majority in parliament. The so-called opposition exists only nominally and doesn't play any important role, only created the appearance of democracy. So Putin and his entourage concentrated all power in their hands. It is no secret that Russia's president election is rigged, although the majority of the population still supports its government. Almost immediately after Putin came to power, he began the destruction of free media. Now it is clearer than ever. After the beginning of Russia's invasion of Ukraine, Roskomnadzor blocked the access to an unprecedented number of foreign and Russian internet resources, which expressed at least a slightly different opinion from the official position of the authorities. Social networks such as Twitter, Instagram or Facebook are also banned. At the same time, the state-run propaganda media have always felt very comfortable under Putin. According to the Russian Ministry of Finance, in 2019 the cost of financing the media amounted to 103 billion rubles. Just think about that figure. It is more than a billion dollars. Taking into account the war, which is now also taking place in the information field, the actual costs are higher at times. Ok guys, while I was editing this video, I found this information on the website of the Russian Ministry of Finance. This document has a description of the federal budget since 2014. As you can see, I was right, the money that is spent on the media is really increasing all the time. Also, Russian propaganda views the territory of the modern Ukrainian state as historical Russian lands, forming such views in the citizens of the Russian Federation since childhood. Recently, teachers have conducted a number of flash mobs, which are difficult to comment. Just look and pity the children. I hope they don't know what they are doing. The borders of Russia don't end anywhere. Putin's famous proverb, which became actively promoted. This is another sign of fascism, the idea of permanent war and conquest. 
At the same time, Russia really likes to justify the occupation of foreign territories by the protection of the Russian-speaking population. Of course, this is only a reason for war, the real purpose of which is to satisfy the geopolitical plans of the Russian Federation. The same was done by Hitler when he occupied the Sudetenland. Newspeak was what George Orwell coined as a title for this particular political language in a tyranny that he imagined as being in 1984. A similar method is often used by the Russian government. The most obvious example is when they call the decline of economy a negative growth. Of course, such insanity couldn't fail to touch upon the subject of the war. Russia calls it a spatial operation. It doesn't recognize that its forces are conducting a full-scale war, destroying Ukrainian cities and killing thousands of civilians. Thanks for watching this video. The description below will contain information on how you can help Ukraine, its people and the military. If you want to support me and my channel personally, there will be given a link to my Patreon page. Have a nice day and goodbye.